Hello everybody, Sam from Florida, big water and tortoise breeders. I get a lot of requests from people that uh, are concerned that they can't take care of a very small tortoise, something under 100 grams. Uh, this particular guy right here is uh, 68 grams. And uh, I have to do some procedures on him. I have to give him um, a flagell or what we call metrodiazonal. And that's because he has protozoa. I know he has protozoa because I, I've gotten a stool sample and I've thrown it up on the scope and uh, I, I can see the protozoa swimming around there. So we know we have to treat this animal. The only problem with treating this animal is uh, metrodiazonal is a, is a medication that's a liquid. So it, it doesn't taste good and when you mix it on their food, they never eat it. So there's not really a, a more reliable way of providing this tortoise that medication unless we actually tube it. The problem is he's, like I said, 68 grams. So I've prepared some of the medication for him already. And what I want to show you is some of the, the things that we will be doing. This is a, a very small tube. It's called a, a number five French. And so that will work uh, very well for him. And then I want to give him hydration. One of the important things about doing something with a tortoise, if you're medicating him and everything, you're giving him antibiotics, and metrodiazonal is also an antibiotic, even though it's an antiparasitic as well. One of the things you really have to concentrate on is you've got to hydrate the animals. If you don't hydrate the animals, then giving them medication alone is really not good because sometimes those medications can hit their kidneys hard and create a lot of problems. So I can't stress enough that you really have to hydrate these animals. And again, uh, a lot of people go wrong because they think if they put him in a little pan of water and he takes a couple sips, He's, he's getting hydrated. No, folks, that's not it. He, that's, not, that's not getting hydrated. When you have a sick tortoise, you have to be able to hydrate them properly. Typically, that's 20 to 30 mLs a, a kilogram. And that's something that your vet will have to, you know, give you the, the precise amount you want to use on your particular tortoise. I've used anywhere within that range, depending on the situation that I'm dealing with. In emergencies, you actually go much higher, like 30, mil, 30 mLs uh, a kilogram. But anyway, again in this tortoise, what we're going to do is we're going to take, um, this is just a simple tiny screwdriver, and I'm going to tickle his mouth open. Once I get his mouth open, I want to stick this tube down his esophagus to get to his stomach. Now, we want to know where his stomach is. His stomach is halfway between this, this uh, tip of his nose and right there. So I've made a little mark there with um, a magic marker. So I know where that magic marker is. When I get him to stick his head out of the shell, I'll know how far I've got to go down in there uh, to put that medication. This is where a lot of people go wrong. They only get it in the neck. When a tortoise has a long neck, the only way he can get that head pulled in is, is to create that serpentine effect with his neck. And what happens is the tubes just go down into the bottom of the neck. They can't turn up, of course. So. What we do, we're gonna, we're gonna put a little lubrication on that tube. I'm gonna tickle his mouth open a little bit and we're gonna deliver that medication in there. Now, one of the things I wanna show you is, um, if you get an oral med medication like uh, metrodiazonol, uh, a lot of times a pharmacy can compound that medication. What you have to do is you got to get the dose from your vet like I explained before. I've already worked out the dose here and it's 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 actually uh, 0.1 ml. The thing that I do though is when I'm using when I'm trying to fill the syringe I don't pull it up from the bottle into the tube because what happens is you end up with air bubbles in that tube and you throw off your whole dosing. So I first pull uh, more uh, uh, medication into the syringe than I need and then I put it back into the bottle and that way I'm sure there's no bubbles in it I could have I just right now I felt in the beginning I could feel the bubbles going down so I knew it was compressing in such a way that there was air there so there we go so now we got the proper medication in the bottle and again I want to stress you use one of these tubes because these tubes have that special end so that you don't irritate the stomach and the throat as you're passing that tube down to the stomach. And again, we're going to I have a little sterile surgery lube here, so just going to hit that there a little bit. Okay. And down paper. 
and this is usually pretty hard to do with one with one person but just for this I'm, I'm gonna give it a shot but I may need Mario to actually insert this tube he's my assistant Mario I'm sure you've seen him in a lot of videos you got it zoomed in there Mario yep. yeah let's go here where the light is and then I'm just trying to tickle that mouth open Okay, that mouth is open, and now I put the tube in. Then I take this out, I take this. Now he wants to expel that tube. So he's gonna move his head in and out, like that. And that's what allows you to pass that tube. Watch that little black mark. He pull, he's pulling it out, he's actually fighting me. But I just felt the tube go the rest of the way in. So, I know I'm in his stomach. Now I'm going to hit the syringe. I've got my dose. And what I want to do, what you've you got to do is you've got to look and you've got to make sure that as you're delivering that dose, you don't see that backing up in the back of his throat. This is the same procedure you do when you, when you tube a tortoise with food. It's the same procedure we do when we're giving certain kinds of medications. And if you're giving some kind of a volume, point one in this case is not a very big volume at all. I wasn't feeding him. Um, but you've got to look at their mouth and you've got to make sure that that food is not backing up in the back of their mouth because they'll get it in their lungs. They aspirate into their lungs and then you end up with an aspirated pneumonia. Okay, so that's that part of it. The next thing that I want to do is to show you that hydration. So just show you the hydration. I just need my <laughs> Everything, okay, I got something right, right here. Our alcohol is missing. Yeah. Okay, so just going to use an alcohol wipe. Right now, typically what I do is I... Typically what I do is I just spray alcohol in there. you got to get this back leg and you got to pull that back leg out. And we're going to put this... We're going to put the hydration, which is actually... I use ringers. A lot of people want to use normal soil. Uh, but in any case, I use both. And I've got that nice and clean those membranes. Then I'm going to take. Okay, so this is my one ml of ringers. Real easy to spot. There's a couple different spots, but what you're trying to do is you just want to kind of go right here in the front of his leg, right there. And then watch. You see the you see it bulging um, bulging up there. Okay, so. There, he's got now half an ml in there. And another spot that you can, we can do some more on the other side, but I've already got this side treated with alcohol, so I wanna show you another spot that you can use is right here in the front, right here. And again, you see the, it's bulging up. Okay, so now the tortoise has got his medication, he's hydrated. It's a small animal, 68, uh, 68 grams. I've been treating him for a while now and he's really responding because now he's 78 grams. And the way you tell you don't have protozoa anymore is you keep taking stool samples and you keep throwing them up on a microscope to make sure that you don't have protozoa anymore. You can't just treat three times or treat two times and then say, well, I treated three times, I'm done. I'm, uh, you know, and not confirm that in fact you're actually done. Also, I'd like to mention, you've got to feed the tortoises when they're sick You've got to provide hydration, and you've got to keep them warm. If, they're, if their metabolism isn't, st isn't uh, stimulated, then you can put all the medication you want in there. It, it, it's actually not absorbed by their body. They can't, they can't break it down because their metabolism isn't going high enough. That's the, that's the proper way to, uh, to, to do the nursing care that's needed with a small tortoise. This video is not meant to uh, supersede a vet visit. 
Uh, if you have a sick tortoise and you're really concerned about him, you go to the vet, you figure out what's really wrong with him. Does he have a pneumonia? Does he have a parasitic infection? You get the proper drugs. Now your job is to be able to go home and provide the nursing care that that animal really needs to pull through that sickness because that's where these animals are lost. They're lost in because the people can't provide basic care for the smaller animals because they're not familiar with the nursing care, with the, being able to provide what, just what I've done today to help support their animals. I hope that video helps people out a lot. Uh, it was a lot of fun making it. Let me know what you think. Take care, everybody.